hard? Is it because it makes you sad or because... No, it makes, just makes me emotional. Yeah, how special they were. Hi family, you're welcome back again to my channel. If you're stopping by for the first time, I am Stella and thank you so much for stopping by today. So guys, I have a reaction video to do and this video was suggested by one of my subscribers. He actually sent this video directly to my mail and I'm going to be reacting to it today. Lars BG, Barry Gibbs, emotional interview following Robbie's death. And I feel like this is kind of a sensitive one to do, but it was recommended to me. So I really want to see this video and I hope you guys, you know, watch this video with me. But if you're new here, please consider liking this video, subscribe to my channel and let's get right into today's reaction, guys. I guess I suppose this is it. That's what set up the idea for the song. That was the inspiration. Did lots of your songs come that way, just something that simple? Well, some kind of source or some kind of trigger. I've got a song that I've been working on for Robin and it's called The End of the Rainbow. It's all about time. Today is tomorrow, winters are summers, and the end of the rainbow is here, you know? So whatever you're searching for, you found. Be happy with where yeah. you are. And I always said to Roman Mo, you know, the dream came true. Stop, stop, sit down and enjoy it. No matter how you look at it, the Bee Gees success was colossal. But for all the joy, equal measures of pain. My greatest regret is that every brother I've lost was, was in a moment when we were not getting on. And so I have to live with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm the last man standing. You all right? Yeah. I'll never be able to understand that because I'm the eldest. It's emotional. I want to take you back because I think people don't realise that you weren't born with silver spoons in your mouth. No. You really were pretty poor. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I th that's the right word. We were from Manchester and we had no fear. Looking for a better life, the Gibb family became ten-pound poms, settling in Redcliffe, north of Brisbane, in 1958. I think growing up in Australia, there is nothing like it. And, and uh, that's my country. That's, that's uh, you know, wow, um, that's yeah. where my heart is. That's where my heart is. You guys knew you wanted to be stars. Yeah, we, we, we wanted to be famous more than anything. You're yeah. dealing with the older brother and two twins mm. who were very close, although they weren't alike, you know. It almost felt like you were triplets. Well, Morris, Morris's uh, stock joke was that we're actually triplets and Barry's deformed. You know, so. <laughs> so, it was it, always funny. You know. And that's how we always looked at each other. We never, there was nothing serious about anything we were doing. Um, um, and we never stopped laughing. We used to have tin cans on brushes, you know, on, on mum's sweeping brush, and yeah. pretend that was a microphone, you know. And that's how it started. Explain yeah. to me why you guys had to leave Australia. Ambition. In London, they were picked up by the management team behind The Beatles. Legendary promoter Robert Stigwood launched their first single anonymously. And Robert put it out in America for radio, but he didn't tell anybody who it was. And I think his, the trick for him was to make everyone think it was The Beatles. Is it true that uh, the song Massachusetts, not only could you not spell it, but you'd never been there? <laughs> no, we did go there, though. <laughs> Afterwards. It was about flower power. Oh because, you know, everyone went through that phrase. Massachusetts was our way of saying, flower power is an era of itself, in itself, and it will pass. And you, you better go home. And the lights all went out in Massachusetts. And Massachusetts is one place I have. See. I think your dad said to you oh to always God. smile on stage when you were young. Oh, he would stand at the back of the audience here. <laughs> Tell Robin. <laughs> but dad was very undemonstrative. He couldn't, he couldn't show his emotions. So know. he never praised you? No. No. Um, um, God. He, would, he would, you know, you'd see the look in his face. That was good. 
Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And that that helped to drive you on, didn't it? Yeah, because you because you're probably looking for acceptance all the time, and and if you get if you get that too easily, you don't work for it. In 1969, Robin left the band, but two years later they reunited, and by the mid 70s had rediscovered their mojo. They moved to Miami as disco erupted, and then the world really exploded for you. Yeah, and we became, uh, I don't know, we were in a bubble, you know. You're in it, but you can't see it, and so you're, you're in the eye of a storm. What's that like when people are clambering over your cars, there's thousands of people wherever you go? It's great, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's never happened well, to me. Hold it, hold it. It would be nice if we could find a bigger sound for that solo. Great. Go rounder. All right. Like that, yeah, beautiful. Okay, let's do it again. Second half of the chorus, but bring that sound in. That's great. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four. It's usually melody first, and um, and then a few days later we'll sit down and do the lyrics. Wow. Because it's nice to let something ferment. Let it let it let it find its way into your head, and let it stay there, and then you do the lyrics. You know, and you make the lyrics fit the melody. Really sound song. It got to a point where uh, you weren't in the charts, you were the charts. We had five in the top ten, and at one point as a writer I had, five, I had three songs in the top five, all by different artists. You've worked with some of the most incredible artists in the world. Is Barbara Streisand <coughs> the most intimidating of all of them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she so. She's right scary. Oh, boy. Yeah, I love her. <laughs> yeah. But she scares me. <laughs> Why is she scary? Does she yell at you or something? No, she's angry. She gets, she gets angry. She's happy and angry and happy and angry. And... You, of course, had the falsetto. Yeah. Tell me about discovering that falsetto. <clears throat> well, <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> um. How do you do it? How do you, I mean, how? Well, you change. You just go from that to that. <laughs> Did you? I mean... And you start singing. <laughs> that scream led me to doing whole songs like that, so. And then everyone got carried away because it worked so well that Robin would say, oh no, sing this song, sing this song, because we're having smashes, we're having hit records, you know? We're six number ones in a row with that sound. Robin wanted success more than anything. And um, that's what made Robin tick. You have said that you never want to feel success because then you'll stop trying. Yeah. Is that why you think you've been able to keep your humility? Because Stay on the ground. Yeah. Don't believe any of it because uh, everything passes no matter what, you know. Yeah. And what have, we witnessed, what have we witnessed in the past 10 years? How, how everything really does pass. On a drive to Miami Beach, Barry is thinking a lot about the old days, about his good friend Michael Jackson. I had a great relationship with Michael. Michael. You know, we had some amazing moments. He would always say, you know, things like, you know, watch out, watch out, Barry. <laughs> Barry, they want your music. <laughs> They're trying to get my music. <laughs> it's all right, Michael. <laughs> what do you think your greatest achievement is? My family, my children, my grandchildren. You know, because that's real. Hello. Well, good day. <laughs> good day, mate. I'm Ronnie. Oh, yeah. How are you? Lovely nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Hello, you sir. Bet. Where'd you get the hat? <laughs> <laughs> so I you, told you. You put up with this man for 45 years. I have indeed. How do you manage to have one of the longest marriages in show business? We don't really know, actually. We don't really know. I guess we keep laughing. We... Yeah. There you go. yeah. As close as Barry is to his wife, Linda, the relationship with his brothers was a deep and unbreakable bond. Nobody really ever knew what, what the three of us felt or what the three of us thought about each other. Only the three of us knew. It was such a unifying thing. Uh, the three of us became like one person, you know, we all had the same dream and, you know, that's what I remember more than anything else. And that's what I miss more than anything else. Robin died four months ago. Morris, or Mo, as Barry calls him, died in 2003. Andy, who was 12 years younger than Barry and a successful solo artist, died in 1988. What happened with Andy was always abstract. The medical story is that his heart was very bad, but he, 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 he had lived a lifestyle that, you know, 
very few of us in the family even knew about. So, uh, what, what would you call it? The LA lifestyle. Yeah. You, know, you, you don't have to look too far. You know? yeah. Why do you think that happened to Andy when the three of you, to a large extent, avoided that depth of... We abuse? never avoided it. We all, we, all, we all fell over at certain points. It has been a bloody tough year for you. It's actually been a bloody tough decade, you know, um, uh, since, uh, since I guess losing Mo. It's 10 years. We lost Mo in 48 hours from being perfectly, you know, spirited, normal guy, as, as wacky as he always was, you know, to suddenly becoming gravely ill and, and, and we just lost him. Um, the situation with Rob um, was different because I... Um, I always felt something was wrong with Rob. And, and, and if something's really wrong with you, you don't want everyone to know. So Robin didn't even tell you until... No, no. Late in the piece. Even now, uh, um, those closest to him will say it was something else. There's a lot of um, not wanting to say what it is, you know. Uh, cancer is cancer, you know. Barry Gibb and your, young, and your young brothers. Now, come on, who are you? Which is which? Your twins, eh? I'm Robin. Robin? And Morris. And Morris. Now, you all seem together, eh? That's right. Mm. And your brother, Barry Place. Now, come on up. Come on up here. That's right. On up through there. <laughs> you know, you can't watch it. No, it's too hard. Too hard. <laughs> Is it because it makes you sad or because... No, it makes, just makes me emotional. Yeah. yeah. How special they were. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. No, I'm not. Are you yeah. feeling the loss of them so dearly? Uh, yeah, for a long time. Mm. I, the only way I can actually deal with it is through music. When you see that, do you remember those of course I do. first... Yeah, we loved it. That's why we did it. That's why we did it, you know? <clears throat> we knew it sounded great, you know? We just, we just knew, and, and that, was, uh, that was our path, and we, there was no other path, so... We love the sound of each other's voices, and uh, can we take a pause? Yeah, sure, certainly. Yeah. Have a have a moment. Do you want yeah. some water? Yeah, love. It's that video, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. Here no, it's go. okay. Yeah. Hey, listen. Yeah. It's sorry. I don't know, know no, not you. at all, love. Um, because that hasn't happened before. You've never cried. No. Oh, Barry, I'm so sorry. That's all right, darling. <laughs> that's all right. That's uh, that's life, isn't it? You know. But that's um, but that hadn't happened. My greatest regret is that every brother I've lost was was in a moment when we were not getting on, and so I have to live with that, you know. And I'll spend my life reflecting on that. Is that we were all we were we were you know there were many times we had conflicts, but uh, but this was uh, it, it was just really. Dis distressing that every time one of them passed, it was during a moment when we weren't getting on. I see a lot of sides to life now that I didn't see before, and I don't know why, but I'm the, I'm, I'm the last man standing, so um, I'll never be able to understand that because I'm the eldest. Mm. Um, so what's, don't try to understand it, you know? Don't try to understand it, just keep, keep moving. That's Scarborough, that's the house. Barry is returning to Tour Australia in February. He'll be sharing his music, home movies and stories, including his colourful childhood in Redcliffe. Right about here, the three of us stood together and decided that we would never break the law again. Really? Joining him in Miami is the mayor of Moreton Bay region, Alan Sutherland. And my speech to them was, we're either going to end up as criminals or we're going to end up being famous. We have to decide now. Well, yeah. that's a changing yeah. moment on the Redcliffe it jetty for the Bee Gees. Was. It certainly was. And I remember having a pen knife that I just nicked from Woolworths. And I threw it in the water. Really? And, and I never stole another thing in my life. Next year, in Redcliffe, a walkway will be named in honour of the Bee Gees. <laughs> what are you doing? A now? model of what's going to be a lot larger. Oh. There'll also be a life-sized statue. This, this must be a bit overwhelming. Uh, the whole day has been a little overwhelming for me. Um, uh, today was the first time I'd actually accepted the fact that my, all my brothers are gone. And that was tough. 
but but I have to thank you for that because that's that hasn't happened. That hadn't happened until today, and because it was totally unacceptable to me, you know. That Robin had passed. Yeah, but all of them are gone, you know. When you get up on the stage in Australia, will yeah. your brothers be alongside They'll be you? on stage with me, yeah. We just didn't agree on everything and that's the way life was. But boy, did we have some fun. Exactly what... My God. From here on, I got the memories and I've been able to un unload a lot of those emotions today. I didn't know what would happen because I hadn't done an interview since since I lost Rob, you know. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Rita. Yeah. A lot and I love his belief so well. Like when he, when the lady asked him his b biggest and um, biggest achievement, he didn't say my record, he didn't say any of those things. He said my family, my children, and all. Like I don't know how this got me. Like I truly feel really emotional listening to this. He said a lot of things. He said a lot of amazing points I can relate to because I'm very I'm like a family oriented person, so I could like see what he was feeling at the moment. So good. I did not pray to be in such position when everybody I know is all gone and this was a lot. This was a lot. Like he just he just has asked as felt what has been done. And uh it's it's a very brave person because for him to talk about things that happened, what the video clips of Lord have mercy, like that was a lot. I even felt emotional listening to this, like seeing those videos of them together and now he's just alone and god this is really emotional guys and thank you guys so much for watching this with me thank you so much for recommending this to me i truly appreciate you and please as well recommend other videos you want me to see i would love to react to them as well and i will see you on my next one guys bye guys stay safe and please guys share love to your loved ones your family everybody around you just share love to them show love to everybody you know because it's truly essential it's really essential. I should not be late. Share love today. And I'll see you on my next one, guys. Bye and stay safe. I love you all so much.